Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about the core components of Spring IOC which are Bean Factory and Application Context. Before we start, if you are new to the channel and not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and share it across with your dev community. Now without any further delay, let's start. The main concept of Spring Framework is dependency injection, which is possible because Spring is actually a container and it behaves like a factory of beans. Bean factory interface is the simplest container present in Spring Framework. So what exactly are beans in Spring Framework then? Beans are the simple Java objects that are configured and maintained by Spring IOC container. As we have already seen in our previous video of inversion of control, we configure all kind of required beans in an XML and then Spring IOC container will read that configuration from the XML and create the objects of those configured beans and manage their life cycle as well. So there are two types of bean factories present in Spring Framework. The first one is bean factory interface and second one is application context. In case of bean factory, it does not support the annotation based configuration, whereas application context does support annotation based configuration as well. So in case of bean factory, we only have to configure the beans in the form of XML. Now let's see a few important methods which are available in bean factory interface and what do they do. The first one is contains bean and it requires one uh, parameter as an input, the name of the bean. So it will check in the factory or in the pool of beans if that provided name bean is available or not. So it will return either true or false. The second one is get bean. So using this method, we can provide the name or ID of the bean and it will retrieve that bean from the pool and return it back to the caller. The third one is get type. So if we want to know what type of bean is there, like if it's a student or employee kind of bean, so we can provide a name of the bean and using get type method will come to know the type of that particular bean. The other two methods will tell you the scope of the bean. So is prototype, it will tell, it will return true if the provided bean name is actually of scope prototype. Otherwise it will return false and similar for is singleton as well. Now let's see what steps we need to follow to create a Spring project as well. So the first one is create a Maven project with Maven archetype quick start. You can use any IDE for that. After that, you need to add Spring framework dependency in pom.xml. Then we'll, we'll be creating a POJO class. After that, we'll configure the beans in XML. Then we will use the bean factory to read that XML for object creation and injection. Now let's move to the IDE for our hands-on. So I'm using Intel IJ as an IDE. So here, uh, let's start looking into the files which I have already created in uh, one of the test project. The first one is uh, pom.xml. So what exactly is a pom.xml? It is a configuration file which is required for the Maven projects so that uh, it can contain the configuration and all the required dependency details as well. So what do we need to uh, update in pom.xml after uh, creating the Maven project? We need to add the maven.compiler source and target. This is the version of Java that you will be using. And after that, you under the dependencies section, you need to add this particular dependency, org, spring framework, spring and its version. So once you add it, you, you need to go to Maven and you can execute uh, some Maven goals like clean install so that it can fetch the mentioned dependencies and store them in your local. So that is the configuration required in pom.xml. Now next was to create our POJO. So for our uh, example, I have created this student class. So it is only having uh, one field which is name, created setter and getter method for that and, and also overridden the two string method to display it in a proper format. So once these two things are done, then we can create our config.xml file. You can name it anything, but you just need to place it in the class path. So here I have placed it in the resources folder. So what I have done here is I have added uh, this bean 
this bean first bean is for uh, bean factory and the second bean i will be using to uh, demonstrate the application context as well so uh, let's see what this bean contains so it contains id id is student so we will be using get bean method by providing this id we will be able to fetch the bean created by spring ioc using this particular configuration and here we need to specify the class so the class is org example student we can also specify the scope of the bean so just for the testing purposes i have uh, added scope as prototype that means every time uh, a request is coming for uh, this bean a new object will be created so we'll cover that scope of the beans in a separate session so here just uh, you need to understand how you need to define the beans or configure the beans in the xml so in this i have used property tag so what that means I, that means that i am using setter injection in this case if i have used constructor tag then i would be using the constructor injection so here i am using only the property tag and there uh, the name property i am setting it to lazy programmer so with this configuration present in config.yml the spring ioc container will automatically read this configuration and create an object of student class with name as lazy programmer so that was our main focus that we need to decouple the object creation and uh, let the framework do that instead of programmer creating a new object so we will see that in action as well uh, similar is the case for the second bean which i have defined so that we will be using uh, to demonstrate the application context so only difference is in the value i have updated now let's move to the main class where our main function is written so here in the main function what we are doing we are creating a reference of bean factory and we are creating an object of class path xml application context so by this what we are doing we are passing the configuration and this using this configuration an object of bean factory is created a factory is being set up using this xml so what spring framework will do it will read this xml whatever beans are defined in this or whatever wiring is defined in this particular uh, xml all those things will be created by the framework itself under this factory object and after that using this factory object we can retrieve whatever bean we require so is it clear till the uh, line number 9 and 10 so if you have any queries please do let me know in the comment the next is we need to get, now we already have uh, the bean created which is with the id student now we need to get that particular bean and as also we have just seen in our uh, previous slides that how to get a bean so using dot get bean method on factory and by passing the id of that bean it will return an object but factory does not know that it's a bean of type student so we need to explicitly typecast it to student that's it and we can assign it to uh, any student reference so here s1 is the student reference to which we are assigning the bean returned by get bean method and after that we'll be printing s1 so what can we expect here so here uh, the name is lazy programmer and in the two string method we are just printing student name lazy programmer so we are expecting this as an output now let's try to build and run this particular class now let me maximize the console as well so here you can see an object of student has been created but you see we have not used create a new student keyword anywhere so now the developer is not responsible for creating the object of student the student objects are created by framework itself in the factory and we are just uh, requesting the factory to uh, give them uh, whenever it's required so it is just the factory is injecting those beans whenever it is required or requested so here you can see the output of that uh, student object but if you see closely uh, see the log here on top of that so here you will be able to see that it's loading the bean definition here from where it is loading the resources config.xml so it is reading that config.xml to load the bean definitions and create all the beans which are configured inside that and also it will maintain the uh, complete life cycle of all those beans 
Now let's see what is application context as well. Uh, it is a sub interface of Bean Factory. Bean Factory provides basic functionalities as we have already seen and it is recommended to use for lightweight applications like mobile applications. On the other hand, application context provides basic features in addition to enterprise specific functionalities. So what are those enterprise specific functionalities? The first one is publishing events to registered listener by resolving the property files. Second is methods for accessing application components. Then it also supports internationalization. And in the end, we have loading file resources in a generic fashion. One thing that you need to note here is that the Bean Factory interface is being deprecated in the latest releases of Spring and Spring Boot. There are different types of application containers provided by Spring to cater different needs. Let's see a couple of containers for application context. First one is annotation config application context. This class accept classes annotated with at the rate configuration, at the rate component as an argument and return the context itself. The constructor of this accept one or more classes. If two configuration classes are passed as argument to that constructor and have some common classes defined with the same type and name, then the beans defined in later classes will be overriding the beans in earlier classes when passed an argument. To enable this overriding functionality, we need to add one property in application.properties file, which is spring.main.allowbean definition overriding is equal to true. So once that property is added and set to true, then that overriding will work. Another container is annotation config web application context. It was introduced in Spring 3.0. It is similar to the application config application context for the web environment. It accepts classes annotated with at the rate configuration and at the rate components similar to the previous one. These classes can be registered by a register method or passing base packages to a scan method. Other than these two, we have few more containers. So I will not discuss them here and leave it to you to explore more on this side. Now again, let's move to the IDE for our hands-on. It will be a very short hands-on. So I'll be using the same config file or the configurations that we have done for Bean Factory demo. Now we will create an application context object as well in the similar fashion. Now let me uh, clear the logs from here and I will comment out the bean factory related code and i will uncomment the application context related code so here just similar to the bean factory instantiation so we are passing the same config.xml file and create application context file create application context object and using the same context.getbean method we are able to get the bean so here i am passing a different bean which is student1 if I go to config.xml, I can see the student one bean is having name as lazy programmer one. So now let's try to execute this program. So when we run this, you can see in the logs, uh, the latest one lazy programmer one object is created and printed on the console. And again, if you notice in the logs, it is again checking the resource config.xml to load the bean definition. So in similar way, we can also uh, define the beans using annotations in case of application.context. So I will be leaving that to you for the exploration part. So with this, we have completed the hands-on for bean factory and application context both. So I will leave you to explore more on the application context side because Bean Factory is already getting deprecated in the latest versions. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other suggestion, please leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to share this and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, keep learning.